Welcome I'll in. Give me a moment. Welcome in, Miss Tiffany. This is my theme song lately. Good morning, good morning. Um, I am starting to, this is the last of my installments for The Wealthy Place. And um, I'm going to go ahead and jump in. I hope that you've been able to, um, if you didn't get the the ebook, the 30-day devotional, the link is actually right at the top um, of this post. But the other thing is, um, it's just been a blessing, you know. And so today, I, I hope it blesses you as well. So let me just jump right in. So what I've been doing, the the, the I broke it into three sessions because it's a 30-day devotional. For what I did, first 10 days, I talked about what we need to do to get to that wealthy place. And this wealthy place is not a destination as in I'm going on a vacation to a spot, but it really is a place in God. It's in his presence. And there are some promises that you and I have that we can get when we're willing to go into and to um, allow him to take us to this place. And so for the first 10 days, uh, for the first lesson, I talked about the first 10 days, which is how to get to the help, uh, wealthy place. And then last week, I talked about what do you receive? What's the benefit of allowing yourself to be in that wealthy place? And so today I want to talk to you about the last 10 days of this devotional, which is how to bring the wealthy place into your everyday life. Amen. I'm sorry, I got a little bit of a, um, ooh, excuse me, had a little bit of a sore throat, but I said, we're going to still go on anyway. And so let me look at um, how you bring us into the wealthy place. Let me look at this first scripture. Uh, get to my place here. And I'm looking at Philippians 4 and 9 and then verse 19. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And this is what it says. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing then the God of peace will be with you. And the same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. And so what I told you first time, we were looking at Caleb and how Caleb had been given this promise that he was going to go into this wealthy place, into this land that God had promised him. And I just have to believe that Caleb had to have rehearsed and remembered the things that had been promised to him through Moses. He had to have remembered what God had promised to him and that he was also willing to do what was necessary so that he can go in and take this mountain, his wealthy place. And I believe he understood how important it was to be in fellowship with God. And you and I have to rehearse in our hearts the things that God has told us, uh, the thing that God has, has shared with us. Welcome in, um, Sister Chris and anyone else is joining. And so we just want to make sure that we are believing in what God has told us to do. We got to rehearse it. And, and rehearsing something is sometimes you have to say it. Sometimes you have to pray it. You have to write it. Whatever you have to do to hold on to the promises God gave you, that's what you and I have to do so that we won't let the enemy of our soul come and take away our promises. And so we want to look at 
what we need to do. And, and actually everything that I share with you today, I want you to understand that there's one key part about what helps you to make sure the wealthy place is part of your everyday. It's being in the presence. It's being in the presence of God. And so I want to look at the first thing. Um, Psalm 16 and 11, it says, you will show me the path of life in your presence. In your presence is fullness of joy. In your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. And so guess what? The first thing you and I have to do is we have to be in relationship. Good morning, Lou. We have to be in relationship. You know, me and my husband have been married 37 years. And it is so easy to be in a relationship with somebody that what you do is you become so comfortable with them that you forget to, to continually uh, invest in that relationship. But what I am excited to tell you about this, this thing called marriage is this. I am learning new stuff about my husband every day. I'm not, you know why? Because he's changing. He's learning new stuff about me. Why? Because I'm changing. So in relationship, there's always got to be a growth. There should be a constant seeking to learn something new. That's how we should be in God. Now, God is not changing, but you and I should be changing. See, we were, we were child, a child like in our faith. We thought like a child. We acted like a child. But as God grows us, then we become mature. So we should want to be able to hear from God in a more mature way in our relationship with him. So the first thing you and I have to do to make sure we staying in the wealthy place and the wealthy place is part of our everyday. We have to build relationship with his presence. And we can't just want to be in God's presence for stuff. See, that's the childish thing. You know what? If you have kids or if you've seen kids or you were a kid yourself once, you only wanted stuff from your parents. You got, you buttered up mama and daddy. Why? Because you wanted something. We can't just butter up God when we want him to give us a list of things. He's not a Santa Claus in the sky just ready to drop stuff on us. We have to seek him because we want to do what he wants us to do. And that's not always easy. And the things that he sometimes will require us to do don't feel good. But when we're in relationship we seek him because what he said, you will show me the path of life because we know in his presence is the fullness of joy. Because I'm going to just tell somebody today in the wealthy place, joy is in full of supply. Thank you, Jesus. You don't have to find yourself in these dark places. Yes, they will come, but our God, because we're in his presence, he will pull us up out of those places. Amen. So another thing we need to do to be able to bring the wealthy place into our everyday is found in Exodus 33 and 14. And this is what the scripture says. And the Lord said, my presence shall go with you and I will give you rest. I will give you rest by bringing you and the people into the promised land. See, there's rest that comes in the wealthy place. And again, here's that presence, that presence, that presence, that presence. And you know, I tend to write presence with a capital P because that's who God is. He is present. He is present. He's here. He's there. He's everywhere. But see, I can miss his presence because I can block things out. And so if I want to be in the presence of God, and if I want that to be in my everyday, and you want it to be in your everyday, there's a time where we need rest. Thank you, Jesus. And, and I'm going to do a study um, probably in a few months on battle fatigue. That's what, because, because I've been talking about that. And if anybody's heard me, you know, and battle fatigue is the, co the term I coined that what happens is when you and I are battling against the things of the enemy, we out, we're doing the right stuff. But what happens is we can become fatigued. We can become tired. And if we're not careful, we can find ourselves being anxious, bitter, I'm tired. And then that can take us out of where God wants us to. But God says, yeah, I see that you're fatigued from fighting the battle, but I will give you rest. And he said, in my presence is rest because I'm bringing you into the place, to the place. Where's the place? Into my presence. In my presence, you will find rest. And I don't mean just rest as in I'm taking a nap because you can take all the naps you want to and you can still get up and be restless. Why? Because your mind is not settled, because your heart is not settled, because you're worried about all of the things out here. But rest says I have a relaxation. I mean, I'm not worried about what's going on around me. Yes, I see this stuff. I'm not blind to it, but it's not going to shift me. I'm going to stay in the right place. Rest also means, means a ceasing of movement. What's the ceasing of movement? Thank you, Jesus. It's getting good. What's the ceasing of movement? My mind ain't stirring all night long. Thank you, Jesus. My heart is not stirring all night long. I'm not going on this roller coaster of emotions. I'm not trying to figure 
figure out what they think, what they say. Did they say this about me? Did they say this? No, there's a ceasing of that. I'm not worried about what they say. I'm not worried about what they think. They can be, they can be saying all the stuff they want to say, but guess what? I don't want to hear it. Don't bring it to me because that's not my focus. I'm ceasing from moving in anything that takes me out of the, the rest of God. See, there's a time out. Sometimes we got to take, like you take the kids when they get, you know, when you have your children and they they're doing all this stuff and you just you put them in a timeout because you need them to just cool that attitude. Sometimes we have as an adult, we need to take a spiritual timeout. Lord, help me to sit here and just get myself together because I'm just getting on my own nerves. I had, used to have people laugh at me. I just say, you know what? I'm getting on my own. Nerves. I need to go take a nap. Let me go take a nap so I can rest myself because I realize I'm getting in a place where I'm letting stuff bring me out of who I need to be. So we need to know that every day you have God's rest. He said it in his word. He said, I will give you rest. That's not just for them. That's a promise that you and I have today. Amen. So how do we bring the wealthy place into our everyday? Another way is in Exodus 33, 15. And it says, and Moses said to him, this is Exodus 33, 15. I'm reading from the Amplified. And thank you, Sister Chris, for putting those scriptures up there. And this is 33, 15. It says, as Moses said to him, if your presence, again, your presence, if your presence does not go with me, do not lead us up from here. See, there has to be a reliance that we have on God. Moses said, I ain't going nowhere if you're not there. And too many of us are trying to get ahead of the spirit. We're trying to go places where he ain't even there yet. Oh, that's a good one right there. We need to rely on him. And one of the scariest things is to walk by faith. Why? Because you don't see it. And we are very comfortable in relying on ourselves it's just it's just who we are but we can't rely on ourselves because in our humanness we can say what well, a plus b should automatically equal c that's rational that's reasonable that's what we've seen that's what our natural eyes say but god might say no a and q go equal c and you go and well, that don't make sense it's not going to make sense in the natural we have to be willing to listen to what god says in the supernatural what is his spirit saying I had a young man that I, I just interpreted a dream for him and because I was in his dream and it kind of shook him a little bit because he said in a dream he was in all of this darkness and he was fighting because I was in the room talking to him and it was like he was fighting to, to he, he couldn't really hear me. He knew I was talking, but there was like he was trying to push away the sound. But eventually when he relaxed, he could then hear me talk. And the more that I talked, the more he understood and the more he understood, guess what? His room began to get light. And I told him, I said, this is what the Lord is showing me. See, when you're relying on yourself, you stay in darkness. When you are trying to do things in your own strength, it keeps you in wrong places and it muffles out the things that God are trying to tell you. Because in his dream, I just simply was representing the voice of God. And so what was happening is if we rely on ourselves and we fight against hearing what God says and what God wants us to do, what can end up happening is we can keep ourselves in dark places. And I don't even sometimes, I'm not just talking about sinful places, but you're in dark places because you don't have the revelation of what God wants you to do next. You know, you could be needing to know out what do I do next on my job? But until you go and rely on God, you're going to stay in a dark place. You may be wanting to know well, what relationships should I be in? If you don't ask, you stay in dark places. We need to be in a place where we are totally reliant on the voice of God and the spirit of God. And, and let me just tell you something right here. This just gets on my nerve. Don't let people tell you that because you want to pray about a thing that that means you got a crutch or that you weak. Okay, raise both hands. Give me two crutches. If that's if Jesus is the crutch, I'll take both crutches because then I know I can walk the way I'm supposed to. I am going to rely 100% on the things that God is telling me. And don't let somebody make you feel like something is wrong with you because you're not going in your own power and your own strength. See, that's human nature. We ain't going to do this. We are talking about keeping ourselves in the wealthy place of God. Amen. Numbers 3, verse 4. Now, this one is called uh, by uh, an amplified as well. This is Numbers 3, verse 4. But Nadab and Abihu died in the presence of the Lord. Ooh, Jesus. When they offered strange, unholy, unacceptable, inappropriate fire before the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai, and they had no sons. So Eleazar and Ishmar served as priests in the presence and under the supervision of Aaron and their father. This is reverence. Let me now. I'm gonna take a few minutes on here because the Lord was talking to me about this place of reverence in Him in the holy place. 
Now, you know, if I told you, like, as we look at this, and, and, and you know, sometimes we can look at scripture and go, oh, that was harsh. They, they offered the wrong kind of fire. God just killed them. See, God really, we need to understand, yes, even though we under grace, that does not take away from the holiness of God. God is still a very holy God. He's not changed. He still expects us to come to him in honoring him, come in reverence. And he still expects us not to put nothing above him. And too many of us are missing having our wealthy places be part of our everyday because we're not reverencing God the way he wants to. Let me give you some examples. First, First of all, if I told you that, that some of us were idol worshipers, you would instantly think, well, I don't have a Buddha in front of me. I don't have a, um, I haven't put up a big um, uh, statue that I'm bowing to. I'm, I'm, I read my Bible, I pray. So how am I an idol worshiper? Well, there's different ways that you can put something above God. Um, sometimes our, we idolize people. Oh, that's a good one. Sometimes we idolize people. What do I mean by that? I'll just use myself as an example. Somebody might come on here and they may hear what I say and it may bless their soul. Praise God. But if you get to the place where you can't make decisions unless I give you a prophecy, if you can't make decisions unless, you know, you inboxing the prophet all the time and asking him to tell me this, 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 when are you going to God? See, we are just vessels. We only see in part. We only know in part. I can only tell you what God spirit gives me to tell you. If he don't tell me, I have nothing for you. Because then if you pressing me, then I'm becoming a soothsayer because then I'm just I'm just grabbing in the atmosphere and grabbing some. So I can't do that. I can't not be anything to you or anyone else other than God said. Sometimes we can idolize people because, you know, they're a famous preacher or they're a famous this or they're famous that. And guess what? We make them like invincible. We make them God. They can't do no wrong. But they're just as human as you and I. You see your leader or whoever it is that you're following, don't idolize them. Honor them. There's a difference. Honor them is respect the gift that God has inside of them. But don't make them your God. Don't make them your God. Because the Lord showed me that scripture. I forget where it is, but it was where Herod was receiving the uh the the accolades the people he had said a speech and the people said oh he's like a god and soon after that god struck him with a sickness but this was the key part in the scripture it said he sucked he struck him with sickness because he accepted the people's worship see you don't want to be worshiping people but by the same token if somebody is worshiping you Take that down because you don't want to let that go to your head because if I do anything or you do anything we have to give the reverence to God. God showed me another thing, and this is really for women, especially single women. God showed me this a couple of years ago. He said, some of my daughters are idol worship to this God called marriage. Let me say that again. God with a little G. He said a God called marriage. And I said, Lord, what is that? He said, so many of my daughters desire to be married that that's, they're pursuing marriage instead of pursuing me who created marriage. Can I say that again? He said, many of my daughters want to be in relationship, have a husband so strong that they're pursuing God, the, uh, this God of marriage versus the God who created marriage. And what that looks like is somebody will just come along, offer you marriage, and you take it. People will try to tell you this ain't the right man for you. He don't love God and you and convinced yourself I can make him love God. He don't line up with nothing that God has showed you about your future, but you press, press, press and what you end up doing. You end up marrying this man. Now guess what happened? Now you at somebody's altar because you done, you're seeing the true him because you didn't realize that God of marriage was offering you what you wanted but what you found out, it wasn't what you needed. Thank you, Jesus. It wasn't what God had for you. And so what you did is you kept yourself out of the wealthy place God had for you because you wasn't willing to wait. You wanted it when you wanted it. And because of your tantrum and your childlikeness, you end up, you end up finding yourself getting what you what you thought you wanted and it's not what you want and so i said lord well what if they come to you and repent and then say well father forgive me will you then fix it you know what he told me he said no he said because all they're coming to is for me to fix their mess but i never created that he said they have to come and repent to me 
then let me do the work I want to do in him. Will he save that marriage or not? I don't know. You might walk through that marriage for 10, 15 years, and it may not ever be what you want, but guess what? You got to be obedient to what God says. So I want to warn my sisters, if you single, do not move out of the place of reverencing God and allow these lesser things to come in and push you out of your wealthy place. Because in your wealthy place, if you're single and waiting on a husband, God will bring you the husband. But he can't bring you to the husband until you're ready to receive the gift of the husband. Because some of us, we're not ready. I'm just going to say some are not ready for marriage because there's God don't want to bring you broken into a relationship because all your brokenness, that bitterness will spill out on somebody else. So he loved you enough that he wants to take the time to fix you, work on you, prepare you for the husband that he has for you. So don't let that God, that little G of marriage, get you off track. And so just be careful in our reverence. And if we want to see the wealthy place in our everyday, we must see God in everything. Say, Lord, help me because I don't want I don't want anything to come up that will take me off of being who you've called me to be. Because, see, the enemy is tricky. Everything ain't going to be obvious. You can get prideful. You can get all this other stuff can rise up in you if you're not careful. But if you humble yourself, God will show you who you are. Amen. So how else do you bring the wealthy place into your everyday? Numbers 9 and verse 22 says this. Whether it was two days or a month or a year that the cloud of the Lord's presence lingered over the tabernacle, staying above it, the Israelite remained camped and did not set out. But when it was lifted, they set out. The, the way that you and I make sure that the wealthy place, God's presence, his abundance is in our everyday life, we have to respond when he say respond. There's times where God going to tell you to just be still. You know, I don't know about you. I hear a word that, you know, I'm going to nations. Or I hear words, you know, I'm going to raise the dead. I want that to happen yesterday. I, you know, I want it to happen immediately. But it doesn't happen immediately because we want it to happen immediately. Just like David had to wait from the time he was told he was going to be king till he came. Uh, Abraham was told he was going to be a father, but he had to wait those, those 25 years. Sometimes there's a waiting. And we have to respond by being obedient. We have to respond by allow, allowing ourselves to stay in a place of rest, not getting frustrated. We have to respond by just being grateful and thankful that we have a word spoken over us. And we can't be whiners and complainers because when you whiners and complainers, you just find yourself wandering in a wilderness. And so we have to be willing to move when he say move and stay put when he stay put. Sometimes we don't like to stay put, but sometimes we don't like to move either because sometimes we've gotten comfortable. We have created ourselves a place where where we are uh, where it's convenient for us and so we don't want to move so part of the the pro uh, the process is making sure you're listening and you got to be ready to respond amen what do we got to do we have to respond when god tells us to respond and then the next thing is matthew 5 and 8 says this blessed anticipating god's presence spiritually mature are the pure in heart those with integrity, more courage, and godly character, for they will see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. But this, the blessed are those that are anticipating God's presence. We have to be receptive. We have to be ready to be open, approachable, and interest, interested in finding and hearing the things of God. What I found, and, and, and I just recently had a, a student, she was trying to get me saved, I guess, because I had, you know, basically everything about me didn't fit her idea of what a Christian should be. And so she said a woman shouldn't be able to preach. I didn't, if I, a picture I had had no sleeves, so I, you know, I, I had jewelry on, I had makeup on. And so I just, you know, I was on my way to hell. And as far as she was concerned, that was it. That was all. And. But there was such a pridefulness, such a religious spirit in her. I knew that there was nothing I could say that she would receive from me because she already felt she was better than me. And the sad thing about it is this young lady was grieved because she wanted her husband saved. The prophet of me wanted to tell her he ain't going to never get saved because of the religious way that you present God. You present this God of anger and 
wrath. And I'm not saying he's not a holy and just God, but you're never presenting the part of God that says, I have grace, that I love you, that yes, I know you're imperfect. Yes, I know you can't keep all of the laws. It wasn't that you were going to keep all of the laws. I showed you that just to show you you couldn't, that you needed me. And so what happens is if we're not receptive, if we get puffed up and arrogant and we're not willing to receive the word of God, guess what happens? It doesn't, my life ain't changed, but hers misses a blessing. And so I just want to tell somebody, they do not miss a blessing because you're not receptive. You're not receptive to God's spirit. You're not receptive to his, his presence. And I like in the Amplified, it says spiritually mature. See, you got to be spiritually mature to be able to humble yourself and receive. You got to be able to receive from the two-year-old to the 200-year-old. You have to be receptive. I have to be receptive. I desire for my health, wealthy place to be part of my everyday life. I don't want to wake up in depression. I don't want to wake up in lack. And I don't mean financially. Sometimes I might not have all I need, but that still don't mean I don't have the wealthy place. That still don't mean that everything I need is not at my fingertips because it is. Why? Because I am in the presence of God. And so we have to be careful to make sure that we don't get so puffed up that we miss God because we weren't receptive. We have to be receptive. Amen. Next, next one to be in, bringing a wealthy place into our everyday is found in Luke 8 and 47, 8, 47 verse, um, um, Luke 8, 47. And this is what it says. When the woman saw that she had not escaped notice, she came up trembling and fell down before him. She declared in the presence of all the people that the reason why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. See, you know, now I did the hymn. If you didn't see the lessons that I did on the hymn project, go back on my page and look at it. That'll bless you. But I, I've been, I want you to constantly notice what word has been consistent in everything I'm going to tell you. It's the presence of God. That is how we live in the wealthy place of God, when we are in his presence. But in his presence, we got to learn how to be resourceful. See, this woman said, look, I know I'm not supposed to be here. Look, I know that this is probably a risk that I'm taking, but I'm coming in. I ain't going to, I don't necessarily have to talk to him. I don't have to ask him a lot of questions. I'm just going to come in, reach down, touch his hem because why? I just believe when I do that, my faith is strong enough that I'm going to get what I need. You and I have to come to the place where we're desperate. And I mean, to the place where like, Lord, I'm not taking no, I am resourceful. I don't care what people are telling me. Well, Jewel, that ain't going to work. It might not in myself, but I'm resourceful enough to keep pressing. In. I'm going to keep pressing in. I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep trusting. I'm going to keep praising. I am going to battle. See, you know, I've been listening to that. This is how I battle. But you know, the Lord been giving me extra stuff today. You know, I'm battling with my hands raised up, meaning I am in submission. Who goes to a war with their hands raised up? We do because we go and say, I am surrendered to you, God. So the enemy think I'm putting up my hands in defeat to him, but I'm putting up my hands in reverence to you because I have come to the place and realized that you are my resource. You are the one that's going to bring me out of whatever I am. It is in your presence. So I don't have to be in a place of lack. I don't have to be in a place where I can't have all I need. Why? Because you are my resource. Thank you, Jesus. You are my resource. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's the resource, family. He's the resource. He got everything we need, not some of it, all of what you need. And see, because we still want to trust in ourselves, but you got to be willing to say, I can't trust in Jewel. Jewel gonna mess this up because Jewel gonna try to do it with her own natural reasoning. But I realize I don't need my reasoning. I need his holy presence and I need him to direct me because he can see what I can't see. See, I can see straight, but I can't see around corners. He can tell me what's around the corner, what's around the next corner and what's around that corner. He can show you things. God is lately, God has been doing something to me that's been really funny. He's been giving me like these brief visions and then a day or two later, that thing will happen. And so what he's been showing me is Jewel, I'm, I'm forewarning you about stuff that before would have caught you off guard. He not letting me be caught off guard. But the, why is that? Because I get up daily saying, Lord, I want to be in your presence. And I told y'all when I did the hymn project, I get up every day and I do this. Why do I do this? Because it's, it's a visual for me saying I'm holding on to the word that I have been given. I'm holding on to the promises that God has given to me. I'm not letting them go. They're important to me. And I'm going to hold on to them. And hold on to me. I'm going to get up today and I'm going to ask you, Lord, what do I need to do this day so that I can get closer to the promise. 
Because see, you can say, well, I'm waiting on the Lord. Waiting don't mean not doing nothing. Waiting means saying, Holy Spirit, what do I need to do? How am I resourceful so I can get the next thing I need? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So Acts 3.19 says this. So repent. Change your inner self, your old way of thinking, regret past sins, and return to God. Seek his purpose for your life so that your sins may be wiped away, blotted out, completely erased. So the times of refreshing, times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, restoring you like a cool wind on a hot day. Some of us just got to return. Sometimes we mess stuff up and pride will rise up in us and we will just not, will just not change. I, I, I remember when my youngest daughter, she would get mad at stuff and she would cross her arms and she would just sit there and sit there and sit there and sit there. And I would watch after a while because she wanted to get come out of the place, but she didn't know how. Well, guess what? You and I just can't cross our arms when we know we've messed up or we know when we're out of what God wants us to do. Stop being prideful. Stop being stubborn. It's okay to say, Jesus, I messed this all the way up. I shouldn't have said that. Oh, I shouldn't have did this, but help me because I want you to change me. I want that inner self to be changed, that old way of thinking, regrets, past sins. I want all of that gone. I need to return to you. And the way that I do that is when I return to you, you promise to give me a refreshing. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about you. See, and, and some of it isn't don't have to be that you in some blatant sin. Some of the stuff is just that we missed God. There was some stuff, and I said this before, and I'll be transparent again. I was in a place of just this heaviness that I just could not shake. And I said, Lord, why can't this, what, what is it? I mean, I'm going through deliverance, and why can't I shake this heaviness? And he told me, he said, daughter, you mad at me. He said, and you can't receive from me and be angry at me at the same time. See, I was, I had to repent. I had to repent. I said, Lord, forgive me for being angry because what I was angry at is all of the stuff that was happening to me. And in a way, my anger was saying, Lord, you didn't have a right to take me this way. But the truth is, the Lord have the right to take you and I whatever path he go through. And the reason why he takes us through these paths is because he wants to grow us up. He wants us to change. He wants to shift something. He's using it as a refining process. And so one of the things about the wealthy places, we learn how to say, Lord, Everything that comes in our lives, good, bad, or indifferent, you use it for our good. You use it to bring a better me. You use it to bring out gifts. You use it to sharpen me. You use it to give me greater compassion. Because I have greater compassion for people that maybe before I didn't have compassion for. Why? Because some paths I had to walk myself. Some places we have to walk ourselves so then we can go and comfort somebody else with the same comfort we received. But we got to be willing to return from those places, whether it's sin, whether it's wrong thinking, whether it's regrets. Some of us can't receive the wealthy place because we still in condemnation. There is no condemnation in Christ. We return from that place, come out of that place, return back to where he is so that you can receive what he has for you. Acts 4 and 31, I'm almost down to the last ones. And Acts 4 31 says this, and when they had prayed, the place where they were meeting together was shaken, a sign of God's presence. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And began to speak the word of God with boldness and courage. Guess what I'm going to tell you about the wealthy place. See, everything in our life is not just so we can have some stuff. It ain't because, you know, God ain't trying to say, okay, we want to go. And we just, you know, we on this like, you know, vacation with God. No, it's not all about you. Everything God does in you, he wants to bring through you for somebody else. And when you learn how to be in the wealthy place, the way God wants you to be in the wealthy place, what he starts to do is he wants you to be radical. You need to learn how to be radical. And many of us are missing things because we refuse to be radical. What's the last assignment God gave you that you know you didn't do? It's time to go back. Some of us got to return to those assignments. Go back to that assignment and do what he told you to do. Be radical about it. Pray about it. Meet together with brothers and sisters because guess what? His presence is ready to shake some stuff up. Oh, Rabasa. He's ready to shake some stuff up. He said he wants us to have a boldness and a courage. See, I told y'all before, again, just being transparent. When the Lord first told me to do these, last, these lives, Facebook lives last year, I won't do it. 
I did too. Nobody came on. I said, see, Lord, I don't want to listen to me. I'm going, I ain't doing this no more. And I didn't do them. I stopped doing them. But the Lord had to tell me, Jewel, go back and do. He told me, return. What did I tell you to do? He said, I need you to do this. It ain't about you. He said, if don't nobody listen, you put it out there because at some point, the right person that need to hear what you say is going to come. He said, this is not about you. This is not about you being liked. This is not about uh, you having a lot of followers. This is absolutely nothing to do with you. It is about what I planted in you. It's it's my presence in you and what I put my presence in you then guess what I'm gonna bring it out of you why so that you can be a blessing to somebody else and you right the, the the wealthy place when I talk about the wealthy place, I ain't talking about just money I'm talking about the richness of God and his presence it's about his presence yes he will give you some good stuff. But if you read your scripture like the way I read it, it says seek him first and then he'll give you all the stuff. We're trying to get the stuff before we seek him. And so he said, it's time for my children to be radical. What is the assignment he gave you that you've been afraid to do it? Why? Because you ain't want nobody to talk about you. You don't want to seem like you was crazy. You don't want, you just, you know, you want to be comfortable. Guess what? If you want to walk in the wealthy place in the presence of God and to receive the blessings that he had from you, you can't be comfortable. So get prepared to be uncomfortable all the time. Be prepared to always be in stretch. Be prepared to be always growing. God never lets us settle. He don't let us settle and we have to press in. I haven't seen all yet that God wants to show me. I know I haven't. I haven't seen it all. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to get up every day with an expectation of going pressing even more because I want to see what he wants me to see. I want to be who he wants me to be. I want to touch who he wants me to touch. And I, sometimes it calls for you to do some really strange things. I know when early on in our church, when we had just started in our house, the Lord gave me a vision of a family. And I look at that family now and I can almost weep because I see how God has brought out the prophet in the family and, and the prayer warriors in the family. And, and I see how he's changed this family. But when they first came, they have a daughter and she wasn't talking. And the Lord said, you're going to pray for her because she was uh, um, had symptoms almost like she was autistic. And, and the Lord said, you're going to pray for her to speak. And I was like, Lord, I never did that. But guess what I did? This, I, this sister laid her hands on that baby. I started to pray for her. And, and I was like, Lord, ain't nothing happened. He said, keep praying. I was like, Lord, this is uncomfortable. He said, so what? Press in. I kept pressing and pressing. I told her, I said, say your name. I told her, say your name. And after a while, she said her name. Now we can't shut that girl up. If Tiffany is on here, you will amen because that we can't shut her up. Not only can we not shut up, she be running her own prayer meetings at their house. She be prophesying to her family, laying hands on them. Look, we have to be willing to be uncomfortable so God can bring about some stuff that we want. He ain't asking us to be all warm and fuzzy. Stop trying to present a warm and fuzzy Christianity. Be who he's called you to be. Do what he's called you to do. And then just expect the outcome. Just expect the outcome. When we want to walk in the fullness of what God has for us, we have to be, be willing to be radical. You got to be willing. You have to be willing to go to some unexpected places. I mean, God has had me do some things that just didn't make sense. I have an, a, a grocery store that's around the corner from me. He made me go 40 minutes out of my way to a grocery store. And I, all the time I'm driving, I'm like, Lord, it was one right here. Why you had me go over there? Well, he had me go over there for a reason. Because when I went in the store, he said, look, Jewel. I looked, I saw this woman drop her wallet. He said, now you go pick it up and give it to her. And then you bless her when you give it to her. Guess what? See, somebody else might not have gave her that wallet, but I gave it to her. Be willing to hear the unusual instructions of what God wants you to do. Because when you walk in it, guess what happens? The wealthy place comes to you. So if you didn't get nothing out of this study, what I want you to understand about the wealthy place is this. It's a place where God's presence is. It's, it's being in his presence. See, and guess what? As I sit here and talk to you, I am in my wealthy place. Ha. Thank you, Jesus. As I sit and talk to you, I'm in my wealthy place. I may not have a lot of stuff yet, but God going to give me the stuff I need. But I'm in my wealthy place because I have his presence. I have his peace. I have his joy. When I need deliverance, I have deliverance. It's man. When I need healing, healing is man. Whatever we need, thank you, Jesus. He gives to us in the wealthy place. And we have to understand, and he don't just do it so that I can have it or that you can have it. He does it. 
thank you, Father. He does it so that you and I can go be the ambassadors, the examples in this dying world. See, I don't know about you, but if you look around you, people are losing hope. They losing trust in the church. They losing trust in Christian folks because unfortunately too many of us are, are using this platform of Facebook for all the wrong reason. We getting in here and we, we, we trying to fleece the people or we getting in here and we got the battles. I don't want, I don't want to see another Christian person get and add a dirty laundry about how they mad at their wife or how they going through divorce. That's not what that's for. You go in the presence of your, 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 your accountability people and you dump that. Don't dump that in the world. This is a place that God has given us to be able to come in and touch somebody's life. I am not going to spend no time coming on Facebook Live to talk about nobody else other than Jesus. I'm going to tell you that God is good. I'm going to tell you, yes, if you mess up, get up. I'm going to tell you that if you need help, he is the helper. I'm going to tell you, look, it's not about changing the outside because I could come in here, take off all my makeup and all of that. And if my inside is rotten, it don't make no difference. I'm going to tell you how to get into the wealthy place. You get into his presence. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh. Thank you, Jesus. You get into his presence. Now I'm getting ready to pray. I want to read the, the at the end of the book, I have the de daily declarations from the wealthy place. And it's written to you like you saying it for yourself. But again, I'm going to say it for us. Thank you, Father. We are who God says that we are. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to align ourselves with what's spoken by God about us. So, Father, all the lies are gone. All the, the curses, the, even the curses from our family, we come out of agreement with it right now in the name of Jesus because we align in ourselves to the spoken word of God. We're going to use our gifts that are on the inside of us, Father, not for selfish gain, not for us, but everything on the inside of us, we're going to use it. So, Father, when we get to the end of our journey, we're going to be able to say, Father, you go, we want to hear you say good and faithful servant, that we did this job well. Father, help us to pour out, holding nothing else on the inside. Father, we will prosper for within your wealthy place. Father, we come now and crush every curse declared over us because you say we are the best battle acts of the Lord. So Father, not only will we we come out of agreement with those curses, but Father, our prayer life is going to break down those curses. Our, our, our declaration life is going to break down those curses and all of the things that have been spoken over us. We will always walk in your light because we are going to humble ourselves it's because we want you to be the light at our feet and also the light at our path. We're going to live as servant leaders because we were saved to serve. Father, we love without expectation of love in return so that we're going to guard our hearts against unfulfilled expectations and other. Father, right now, we come against that spirit that wants us to expect what we want from people and when they don't give it to us, then we mad at you. We come, we come out of agreement with that right now because we're guarding our heart in Christ Jesus. We will prosper in all of our ways. Spiritually, we're going to prosper. Physically, we're going to prosper. Financially, we're going to prosper because why? We're seeking your kingdom first in all we do. We're going to find rest in God from all of our labels. We're not going to worry. We're not going to fret. Fret. We make our decisions from the wealthy place because in the wealthy place is your presence. God, we're going to get results from our our commitment to you. We hand with your hand is upon us and the power of your presence begin to bring the increase in our lives. We're going to find healing, deliverance in our wealthy place because there's abundance in God. Father, I speak the spirit of abundance, release abundance all over us in the name of Jesus. Father, our houses are blessed. Our children are blessed. Everything our hand touches is blessed because of the influence of your presence from the wealthy place. We're going to walk in confidence today. No more spit spirit of fear, no more doubt, let no more hopelessness. All of it's gone because the presence of, of your love is released from your wealthy place. Father, we thank you because we come and honor you today. Father, we thank you today, Father, because you have given us a place where we can come and really the place is on the inside of us. So Father, wherever we go, when we're in your presence, Father, we are in our wealthy place. So even 
like we can do like Paul, whether I'm in lack or plenty, guess what? We can learn to be content because you are right there. Your presence is with us and we honor you today. Lord, we give you praise for it. We thank you today, Lord God, because we are looking for you to do what you desire to do in us. Stretch us where we need to be stretched. Teach us where we need to be teach taught. Father, give us a greater wisdom. I pray for wisdom over your people today. Father, we need wisdom because we need to be able to fully understand the things of God, to be able to understand the revelations that you give us in your presence and in your spirit. Father, we want to not become puffed up and prideful as though we think we know it all. Father, help us to stay in a place of humility, oh, Rabasa, because we desire, Lord, to have more of you, more, more, more of you. Father, we say thank you because, Father, we bring these declarations to you, but we also bring ourselves as that living sacrifice, Father, holy and acceptable to you. Father, we want to be what you've called us to be. So Father, if there be anything in us that's not like you, show it to us because you know our heart. You test us and see us. And if there be any wickedness in us, show it to us, Lord God, because we want to walk in the way everlasting. So Father, so we honor you today. We love you. Now, I speak for your, over your people today, Lord God. And I just pray, Father, that if there's any need on this live, that you would help them. And even if somebody that comes back later, we're asking in the name of Jesus, Father, that you would help your people. Father, because we need you. We need your presence in everything. We need your presence when we walk. Father, we need your presence. Somebody put the, it's a meme that said, you need your, you need the Holy Ghost even when you go to Walmart. Father, we need your presence all all the time. We need it so we can make the right decisions. So I pray right now in the name of Jesus that your people will be able to make right decisions. Father, it's, it's, even if your children right now are, are in a position where they're going to need to make some decisions for some things they're going to face, Father, I pray that your spirit will speak clearly to them so they would understand what they need to understand because of you. Father, we thank you. Father, and not only do we need understanding, we need a greater revelation revelation, greater wisdom. Father, we ask right now that you would release just uh, unusual wisdom for your people. Father, wisdom to be able to know how to discern the times, how to discern what's going on. Because, Father, many of us are missing our answers because we're looking at the wrong thing. So, Father, help us to get a focus. Help your people to focus on the things that we need to focus on. Help us to look at what we need to look at. And, Father, for some of us that are stuck, I'm asking you to get us unstuck in the name of Jesus. Get us stuck out of our ways. Get us stuck out of pursuing what we want and our heart's desire. Because, Father, many of us been told, follow your heart. No, you don't. Follow the spirit because sometimes your heart is wrong. Sometimes your heart is crooked. Sometimes your heart is broken. Do not follow your heart. Follow the spirit. And as the spirit heals your heart, then your heart will follow after him. But don't just follow your heart. So don't believe that lie that, oh, just whatever you feel, do it. Because guess what? Most of the time that you need to do, don't feel right. So, so you can't go by your feeling. Father, help us to be mature in the spirit. You're trying to grow us up so that we can walk and be who you've called us to be. So Father, we don't want to no longer be children tossed back and forth. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, you will give us the ability to stand firm. Oh, Rabasa. Father, because you've been talking to so many of your prophets about the new thing that you're doing. There's a shift coming. And Father, we have to be in the right place to discern the shift. We have to be in the right place to understand how the shift affects us. Because Father, the shift that's going to happen for me may not be the same shift for somebody else. And we don't want to get in a place where we become jealous because you see uh, you you blessing somebody else, but not blessing us. Maybe it's just not my time. Father, teach us how to rejoice when somebody else is being blessed and to just continue to say, Father, bless them because my time is coming. Bless them because I know you haven't forgot me. Bless them, Lord God. And I thank you because my time is coming. Father, we thank you right now that you're keeping us with the right focus. Keep us with the right focus. Keep us with the right focus. And I hear the Lord say, if you keep your focus on me, there's no way that the enemy can trick you. Because in this season, the enemy is going to try to bring things that really look good 
They're going to almost seem right. He said, but that is the trick of the enemy. He said, ask me. Too many of my children, he said, are not asking me. They are just going on their own thoughts. They're going based on what they want. He said, but if you seek me and find my answer from the wealthy place, from my presence, see, you'll even know the way that they teach somebody that a dollar bill is counterfeit is they don't give them the counterfeit. They keep giving them the real. And over time, you done touch the real so much to when the next time somebody give you a counterfeit, you go, uh-uh. This don't feel right. This ain't what it feels like. See, if you in the presence of God so much, when you are with him in your time of prayer and fasting and meditating, when you in his word and his spirit is teaching you, when some try to somebody come along and try to give you a little something in your ear, yo, you're going to say, uh-uh, that's not the real. That's not the real. That's not the real. We're not going for the counterfeit. Oh, Rabba Sata. We don't want the counterfeit. We want the real Holy Ghost. We want the real Holy Spirit. We want the real. And the real ain't just in the jumping and the shouting. The real you find when you get on your face. The real you find when you're willing to fast. The real you find when you're willing to do the work. Because guess what? I've gone to places where the spirit was high and stuff was jumping and it was good. And the Lord said, look around. He said, because everybody jumping ain't in my presence. He said, everybody shouting ain't in my presence. He said, some of them, this is all they get because they doing it for show. We not going to do it for show. Thank you, Jesus. We're not going to do it for show. My brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Don't do nothing for the show because that'll be your reward. You'll, you'll fall short of getting what God wants for you. You want the real. And his presence is real. His presence is real. His presence is real. Seek him. And the only time you can feel good is on Sunday. Something wrong, you ain't in the real. And I'm not talking about something wrong with the church. I'm talking about something might be wrong with you. You shouldn't just feel good and, and just feel like shouting just on Sunday. Your presence, God's presence should be with you on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday and all back again. Guess what? Daily we got to come and say, Father, I seek you. I seek you early. I wake up to talk to you. I stay up to talk to you. I'll do whatever I need to do to get in your presence. I need your answers. I need your assurance. I need you to help me. I am like a little girl that's lost without her father. I need my daddy. I need Abba. I need your kabod. I need your glory. I need it. I need it. I need it. I need you. Ooh. I need you. I need you. I can't make it without you. Thank you, Jesus. And we got to be okay. You know, be okay. I put on Facebook. I said, I got to cry the ugly cry. I don't care if somebody look and say, what's wrong with that woman? Look, when you've been in his presence. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh my God, my God. When you've been in your pres his presence, when you've received from him, there's nothing you can do but shout about it. That's right, Sister Arnett. You shout about it every day. You thank him every day. You say, Father, I appreciate what you're doing in my life. I thank you. And I don't want it just for me. I want it for everybody. See, there's no way you could be in the presence of God and don't want somebody else to be in the presence. If you selfish about your walk with Christ, I have to say, I wonder how much of the presence you really experience because that's not how it is. When you've been there, and you know when you've been broken, when you know when you was in lack and God stepped in, you want everybody to have it. You will tell it to the lady in the grocery store. You tell it to the man across the street. You tell it to the mom on the street. You going to tell it to everybody. Why? Because of his presence. Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. I just release over your people. I pray for a hunger. That's what I hear the Lord say. I, I pray for a Holy Ghost hunger to hit each one of you that's listening now and in the replay. I pray a hunger for the things of God would overtake you, that you just won't be content with a little of Jesus. You won't be content with dabbing a little oil of Jesus. You want to be smothered in the oil. You want the oil to over immerse you in the anointing. You want to be covered. You want your head to have a new kind of oil. You want the Lord to anoint your thinking so your thinking is better. You want him to anoint your eyes so 
so you can see better. You want him to touch your ears so you will hear right the spirit. You want him to touch your throat and your voice and your mouth so that what comes out is pleasing to him. You want him to touch your heart. You want to be smothered in the oil on your heart so the broken places are fixed so you can love like he wants you to love. You can love the way he wants you to love, not the way you want. You, he, you want that non-ending, never-ending love for God and his people. Not about how well they treat you, because everybody ain't going to treat you right. But you got to learn how to love even those that are unlovable. You got to learn how to love those that's going to dump on you. You got to learn how to pray for those that's going to misuse you and mistreat you. You got to love anyway. Why? Because God loved you in the midst of when you were doing all of that to him. When he was wooing you and you wouldn't listen. When you was running and didn't want to hear. He still loved you. If he loved you till you got it right, Love somebody else till they get it right. So, Father, anoint us all over with your presence. Let the glory of the Lord fill us, fill our spaces, fill our rooms. Father, give us that Holy Ghost hunger for the things of you. Father, in this season, let us not be content to go through another year where somebody ain't got saved because we didn't talk to them, prayed with them, partnered with them. Father, if we ain't walked nobody into salvation in the next in this year already, forgive us, Father, in the name of Jesus, because we repent, because we've been lack in our responsibility. So, Father, help us to go out and touch somebody's life. Go out and make a difference to somebody. Go out and do the things that God has called us to do. And I'll so just want to say to you this God says stop letting people tell you you are not good enough because see that's what the enemy does to keep us from sharing because we start thinking we not good enough we listen to the lies we listen to his his taunt but I just come today to say there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus so what you don't look like sister a so what you don't look like brother B you you God didn't ask you to be a counterfeit of nobody else he said be the real you let him bring the real you the real you grows up in this season. The real you comes forth in this season. Quinn, the real you is coming forth in this season. I just since for so long and for too many years, people have just tried to tell you what you weren't. But I come to tell you, I don't know nothing about you, but I come to tell you what the Holy Ghost said. He said, you are special to him. He said, you are my daughter. And because you are my daughter, you're going to do great things. Why? Because I am in you. As long as you stay in my presence, there's no way that in the presence of God, that doesn't come forth. See, it's like Moses. When he was up in the presence, when he came down, the people couldn't tend to look at him. Why? Because the glory was so deep. That's where we're going in this season. We're going to be so close to God that people are going to see the glory before we open our mouths. Before we say a thing, God is going to begin to show who we are. So I declare that over you today, that you're going into the kabod, the weightiness of God, the weightiness of his glory. And I declare that over everybody listening to me. Be in the place where you are able to receive that glory. So when they see you, even before before you open your mouth, your presence, I declare your continence is about to show who you've been in the presence with. The continence is about to show the fire you've gone through. Your continence is about to show your prayer life. Your continence is about to show who God says you is. Your continence is about to show it. Quinn, because I'm going to go back to you. God said, I have some people who are waiting for you. Their name is on you. It's like, I see people with your name across their chest and they prisoners and they waiting for you to speak life into them. They waiting for what you have to deposit in them. And that's what's going to break off the chain. It's many of you right now. God says your name is got something to your Your name is written some on, on, on some assignments. Norman, your name is on some assignments. God has some assignments for you that only you can accomplish. Don't let nobody, the devil in hell, don't let them tell you what you can't do. You have sufficiency all in Christ Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you. I thank you, Father. I just feel like there's a release. I, I don't leave this live without receiving what God wants you to do. It's, I can feel the fire. I can feel it in my belly. Oh, Roboso. God is raising up a fire on the inside of you. And with that fire is coming confidence. Norman, you got some more confidence coming in the name of Jesus. More confidence. More confidence. More confidence. Because you let people tell you you don't talk well enough. That you you kind of, sometimes you it seems like I, I 
sense that you, it takes a little time for you to get your thoughts out. God said, that's all right, but get your thoughts out. Because when it comes out, wisdom is coming. I just speak a release of wisdom when you talk. You ain't got to say a lot, but when you say it, wisdom is coming out in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you today because of your great mercy unto us. We are going to walk in the fullness of what you have for us. The fullness. I just say it again. Receive the fire that God has for you. We are in the wealthy place and the wealthy place is where the presence of the Lord is. There's peace there. There's joy. There's provision. All of what he need is in the place. And in that provision is have an expectation for the bigger. I need to say this before I end. Have an expectation for the bigger. Because many of us are asking God like for this much. Lord, if you just love me, if I was your child, can you give me just a little this and that? God has said, ask bigger. You know, I have this saying. It's a scripture that says, your, the, the scripture Psalms that says, my cup runneth over. You decide the size of your cup. Stop giving God this thimble. Because he's going to overflow it. I tell him, Lord, I bring the cup of the, the size of an ocean. And you're going to overflow that. Think bigger. The Lord is saying, bring me the faith, a radical, unusual, high expectancy faith that says, God, I'm trusting you to give me everything I need. And not simply just for stuff's sake. I want, I want to see the dead raised. I want to see a greater manifestation of his power. I want to see people healed. I want to see people saved. I want to see lives changed. I want to see people that couldn't take care of themselves go to taking care of themselves. And I'm believing that God is going to put in my hands the resources. He's going to put it in my hands to bring these things. You and I need to start making that declaration over ourselves from our wealthy place because that's what the Father says is ours. It's available to us in the name of Jesus. And Tawana, I know you came on later, but, but I just have this to say, and I, I, I sense it every time I see you. And that is, is that the Lord is going to stretch what you're doing in ways and capacities you don't even see yet. I, I, I don't know if I said it or somebody else said, but I saw you with a bigger building. But I also see not only with a bigger building, not only with some women that are going to help you and that you're going to train, but I see you almost starting, I want to say an academy, but you're almost starting a, a system where you're going to teach people how to do what you do and then you'll become in a way kind of like an apostolic calling and you know we hear apostolic and automatically mean i gotta go plant a church but there's apostolic positioning even in the marketplace and so i hear the lord saying that what he's going to do is show you how to reproduce the thing that you're doing but you're going to reproduce it in a way that some of the same people that didn't have will be able to come and now they can be part of this resource because it's going to bring it's going to bring an opportunity for jobs it's going to bring an opportunity for wealth and it's going to bring an opportunity for greater um, uh, reach. And so far, I hear the Lord just saying, you trust that and keep pressing in. Ask him. I can see him to want He say, ask him. He is excited. Can I tell you guys that he's excited about answering the prayers of his children? Those that belong to him, he's excited about it. You know, as a parent, if you have a child and you see that child loves you and is being obedient, you can't wait to bless that child. God ain't sitting there trying to hold back from us. He is excited about blessing us. And so I thank you for that. And I, and I thank him for that. And so Tawana, he says, ask him. He is excited to give you the desires that are in line with him. And I said before, we ain't following after a wrong heart, but you're following after a heart that is already vested in him. When your heart is vested in him, then he will bring forth the things of God. Father, we thank you. I just seal this word. Father, I seal the word that was spoken over your people. I pray that even um, my prayers consistently, Lord, let them meditate on this. Because I don't want it to be just like, oh, that was a good live because we listened to a lot of these. But Father, take it and make it bite-sized pieces so that they can digest it. And so during the course of the week, this will come back and they'll be reminded of something. They'll be reminded of what it is that you want them to know. You will be reminded to continue to do the things that you've called us to do. 
And so we just honor you today. We seal this. The enemy is not going to come and snatch away any of the word that's been planted. This seed is going to find itself in good ground and it is going to produce a good fruit. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. And so I won't be here next Normally we're on Thursday, but I won't be here next Thursday because I will be at a conference. I'll be out of town, but I'll be back starting in August. And I'm excited because I am doing what I'm calling the seed life. I'm working on the ebook now um, that I will be offering when I do that as well. Um, and I just believe the Lord is going to, to bless you. And so if you didn't get this this de this devotional, you still can get it. And, and, and I just think it would be a blessing to you to just remind you of the wealthy place yourself. And so I'm going to put all of that in the uh, comment section so that you can get it. And so again, you know, um, or if you would like to, uh, you know, help me by getting some of my books, um, I, I just would uh, would appreciate that. You can get them on Amazon in my um, bookstore, or you can get them on my uh, my website in my bookstore. So I'm putting both of the links, the direct links to uh, them. And so, you know, I just want you to continue to be blessed. And I, I give because of just the, the love of God in my heart. And I pray that this has some, some kind of way blessed you. And so until we meet again, my saying is always pray until you see the mountains move. God bless you.